love. Love, love, love. Life as a follower of Jesus is all about love. The scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the elders, a whole throng of religious authorities all throughout Mark's Gospel here, especially as we we get closer here to the 10th chapter where we are today, or the 12th chapter, excuse me. All of them have been trying their best to trap Jesus. And I like to imagine that the scribe in today's Gospel vignette, if you will, approaches Jesus with honest and with loving intent. We don't really have proof of that one way solidly or the other. There's arguments both sides. and it, We do know that this scribe came close to God's kingdom in his interaction with Jesus. That's what we do know for certain. That this scribe came close to God's kingdom as he interacted and listened to Jesus. This particular scribe wants to know what the first stores, as we like to say, what the greatest commandment is in Jesus' opinion. This would have been a fairly regular question. It wasn't that out of the ordinary. They, they talked and debated these things on a pretty regular basis. To which Jesus shares from the Shema, from, from a section of Deuteronomy, plus a little piece of Leviticus in there too. We're to love God with our entire being, our whole selves. We are to love our neighbors as well as we love ourselves. This, is, this message is so simple and mercy. Is it difficult? It's difficult, right? Love? I'm, I'm not talking the love that you go out on a Friday night to see a movie and you enjoy dinner out and have drinks later or whatever. Uh, the, the kind of love that talks about offering oneself, being present to oneself in the, in the good times and the suffering times and all the times in between where we have disagreements and we still love and honor and respect one another. That's a really hard thing to do. Love is the way, though. Loving doesn't mean that we blindly accept the status quo. It it isn't about the Friday night date nights. So much more than we make it out to be so, so often. On the contrary, to follow Jesus is to work to make sure all creation, to remind and to remember about God's liberating love. And that means that we have much work to do today. I, I know I'm fond of reminding us and and just being real open and honest, I hope, and authentic with us. I know that today, communities hurt. And I know that Wyoming isn't immune to the hurt, nor our surrounding communities, to the pain that goes along with living in small communities during contentious times. I think we need to be fair and honest and just be able to name that. Loving our neighbor as ourselves does not mean agreeing with them. That isn't love. Loving our neighbors means we remember that they are children of a loving God. It means that we are are children of a loving God. It It reminds us that we remember that all children of a loving God exist, even as we approach life so often in different ways. I love Jesus. I don't think in the Episcopal Church we say that enough, but the hymn we just, uh, uh, that, that kind of gets to that feeling of I love Jesus. We need to be able to declare that. That's the next verse, Sarah. Write it in. I love Jesus because he is willing to do the hard work of loving. Jesus could have gone along to get along with the religious authorities of his day, but Jesus has a different vision for the reign of God. And Jesus wasn't afraid to stand up for love. He was crucified because he wouldn't back down from liberating love. And I have to wonder to what extent I and we follow Jesus authentically and wholeheartedly today. Because for me, it can be tempting to quiet down in the face of injustice. It's easier to to go along to get along, right? It can be tempting to play it safe. It can be tempting to bury my head under the proverbial sand, to try in vain to rearrange chairs on that sinking Titanic, to look to the material successes of the world rather than choose to lean into love. It's hard. Leaning into love looks like caring for the needs of another before our own needs. Love isn't just about my needs, about what will make me happy or what will make my family well-to-do or safe or any of those notions. Love is bigger than self. One of the things the church has done throughout the centuries, we didn't talk about this in the 9 o'clock, Don, but in the 9 o'clock Bible study, one of the things, that, that, aside from atonement sacrifice and theories, is the fact that one of the things our church has done is we've made love and Jesus all about me, my personal salvation, 
Mm, I feel good about that. Jesus loves me. It's all about me and my salvation. I'm not too concerned about you. It's about me and my salvation. Now, no, I, I know that's dangerous to do when you're videoed live. I'm being facetious. <laughs> it's about community. It's about the corporate, the, the corporal, the body of Christ together. Yes, Jesus loves me and ju- loves you just as you and I and we are. Absolutely, I believe that. But it's not just about us. Loving means leaning into looking at the care and the needs of others and not just what's in my best interest today. Loving and leaning into that love looks like listening to another when we're in disagreement. It doesn't mean that we agree. But at the least, we can listen, right? I hope. Loving and leaning into love looks like speaking the truth when the truth may well be the thing people don't want to hear. I don't know that we have different truths going around or or different opinions about the truth. we, We know that. Say your truth in love. Listen in love. Leaning into love looks like pushing us out of our comfort zones. This is one of the harder ones, I think. Pushing us out of our comfort zones, knowing that growth best takes place when we are uncomfortable. Or as we talked about earlier in the Mark class uh, at at the 9 o'clock time frame, when we suffer. I don't know many people who say, yeah, listen to that. So we we suffer, and for me, when I suffer, those are the periods when I experience the most transformation, when I experience the most growth, the most growth. And I think that's the same for church bodies, for communities. We grow when, when we go through suffering, and I have not once awakened and thought, you know what, I think this is going to be a day of suffering, and I can't wait, because I'm going to grow. <laughs> That's not where I am. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is the fact that we do need to lean into love and recognize that the way of love, the way of Jesus Christ, is the way of liberation and the way of transformation. And to do that takes us getting out of our comfort zones. Looks like disagreeing with a neighbor on any number of things. Being able to look them in the eye, to look into their heart, and to see beloved child of God. Beloved child of God. Beloved child of God. After Jesus shared his life-giving take on the greatest commandment, the scribe responds, You're right, teacher. You truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Being not far from the kingdom of God isn't to be near earthly death to enter into some kind of a heavenly realm in the afterlife. That's not what Jesus is getting at here. Now, this scribe drew closer to the kingdom of God as he interacted with Jesus, as he heard the good news. The good news that love is much more important than offerings and sacrifices. If for just that moment the scribe saw love as the focal point, that was enough. He'd come near the kingdom of God. What do we allow to get in the way of God's kingdom? What do we allow today to get in the way of enacting, of embodying love? We aren't offering burnt offerings or sacrifices today, thanks be to God. I'm not into that. I know you aren't either. But what might be practices that stand in the way of love? I'm not going to try and list a litany. We all have different quite frankly, different religious practices that get in the way of seeing the prominence of love. It's different for each of us. What if we kept love at the center of everything we say and do? We wouldn't be, pr- I've, I've tried it, and I assure you I'm not perfect, nor are you. But if we, if we kept love at the center of everything we say and do, what might the world look like differently if we, if we really wholeheartedly try that? How might the world be and become different today if our hearts and our minds become transformed into an acting love of God when we fall short of loving? Because we will. We make the best of the situation. We make best of the interaction. We make it right as best we can. And then we pull ourselves up from there, from honoring God and the other and making it right and then looking for more 
more ways to show love. Wouldn't that be great? Love it. What if we recognize that, as Mother Teresa reminds, it is not how much we do that is pleasing to God, but how much love we put into doing. It is not how much we do that is pleasing to God, but how much love we put into the doing. Amen.